Hello, I'm JW. This time we've got more things which were sent in, these being sent in quite a while ago. And uh, what we've got here are a couple of very old items there. So let's have a quick look at those and also the note that came with them. Now here's the note for this one. And as you can see here, this came from a demolition of a basement in Hampstead in London. And uh, they have sent this in for the museum. And for those that know, it's on the website at flameport.com. So uh, rather than throwing it in the bin, as most of this stuff goes, this will also be uh, added to that. And we've also got a uh, meter card as well, which was on the wall next to this. So let's uh, have a look at uh, what we've got. So this is what we have. Now, uh, this is a fuse box of a certain type, but uh, also this is some sort of uh, expanding foam or something over it, but uh, also it's been uh, picked up over the years. This is your main switch here. It's basically two switches just linked together with this uh, bar here. So uh, on and off. And these things, which uh, hopefully will unscrew, and these are basically porcelain threaded holes in the top there. And then here is your fuse, or oh, in the case of this, uh, a rather nasty mess of fuse wire. Have a look in this one as well. And again, we can see the fuse wire there just between the two terminals. It looks like someone's put an extra large amount in here to avoid things uh, failing. One problem with rewilder fuses. So this is, although it doesn't look like it, this is actually a fuse box. So that would have also been into a single uh, piece of timber there originally. That's obviously uh, cracked open with the age. Two fuses and then your double pole switch. And from the age of this thing, it's going to be one fuse for each, the line and the neutral. Obviously that's not done these days, but that was fairly common, certainly when this was around, which is long before 1955, when neutral fusing was not allowed. This style of fusing was obviously called pepper pot uh, fusing, mainly for the appearance of them with the uh, little holes in the top, although uh, I wouldn't recommend putting uh, pepper or much else in there holes there to uh, basically vent out any excess pressure inside because when the fuse wire fails, particularly if there was a short circuit, it's going to heat up to very high temperature and it would increase the air pressure inside due to the heating effect. If it didn't have the holes in and this was screwed down, and there's a very good chance this could crack or even explode apart, so hence it had the uh, holes in there to uh, vent out any excess gas. And of course there'd be a nice uh, flash of light coming out of there and maybe some bits of molten copper flying out as well. A fair bit of corrosion on this particular one. And we can see inside there is a certain amount of blackening, certainly on this one. So these fuses have definitely failed at some point in the distant past. Still got some wiring on the back here. And we can see this is the uh, rubber insulation with a cotton overbraid. As with all this old stuff, the uh, rubber insulation is now just completely dried up and totally brittle. It's literally uh, very, very hard there, so obviously at long pass it's best. But we can still see the two colours of wiring. We've got the black here, which would have been for the neutral, which is basically this one, this piece, and then this one here. And then this would have been red originally. It's obviously faded considerably now, but again, just going through there and up to here. So basically the switch here is just double pole. It's two single pole switches gang together, line one side, neutral on the other through the switch, through the fuses there, and then obviously your other connections are over here. A wooden backboard here, and again just screws going through to secure the various bits on to the board, and also obviously securing it to the wall. Now these switches would have been sold as literally two separate switches, and this bar as an additional item to link them together. So it's just a couple of brass screws there securing this bar in position, and that should now just uh, lift away. So it is just a normal toggle switch there, it just has a threaded piece at the end so you can obviously attach this bar to it at a, uh, once you've installed it on the wall. Now unfortunately the tops of these are actually uh, seized on here, normally they would just unscrew and then you just lift off and see what's inside, but these two are very solidly stuck so I'm not going to uh, wrench at those and obviously risk breaking them, but essentially it's got a uh, vitreous uh, ceramic base here, the same as uh, the sort of material here. And then it's just a metal uh, dome which uh, screws down onto the top of that. So these would look pretty much the same as that in terms of the base piece. This has the uh, switch mechanism inside. And these are just single pole uh, one-way switches, so it's just two contacts, either separated or joined together. 
when it's in the on position. That uh, bit of brass colour there is what they would have looked like originally. Of course, that's uh, long gone now. Obviously, it's uh, had uh, many, many decades of corrosion on it. Now, the other item that came in was this, uh, which came with those from the same uh, place, obviously. And this is a metre card, which is basically just a selection of metre readings from the particular property these were in. And we've got the dates down the side here, and obviously the uh, reading of the units consumed. So, uh, top of the here we've got 29th of March 1954, and uh, that was the most recent. And the earliest date on this one was the 9th of June 1952. And we can see the amount of units that they've used over that period. Pretty small, in fact, but then bearing in mind in the 1950s, people didn't have a huge amount of electrical stuff. So we can see here units consumed sort of 51, 57.99. So around 100 at the top there. So it's one at the bottom here we've got, say, for between June and uh, September 1952. They only use about 57 units, so uh, certainly not a huge amount. And we just about see here the Hampstead District, uh, Lithos Road. If you could see the rest of the information there. And then this would have had the uh, customer's name at the top here, which is ABV Brownlow. Quite difficult to read there, and also the address and the meter reader serial number. Back of this does have space for more readings, there's nothing actually on the back, and this unfortunately is this uh, expanding foam, so it's presumably some kind of insulation that was being used at some point in the building, which unfortunately has uh, ended up all over everything. But uh, fortunately, the front uh, has survived, so that's something. And a little bit of string there, which will obviously tie it around the fuse box, that thing we saw previously. And even by 1952, this sort of thing was already pretty much obsolete. So uh, this is considerably earlier. This is probably 1930s or maybe even older, certainly uh, pre-war. But uh, of course, like most things, just because new things are available doesn't mean people necessarily replace them. They'll uh, stick around for a surprising amount of time. And even today in 2021, there's still installations out there which have rubber cotton covered wiring, even though it hasn't been in use for over 60 years. So thanks for sending those in, and it just did take quite a long time to get to these, but uh, they all do get to eventually. They uh, don't get sort of lost or anything like that. And uh, pictures of these and things will be on the website at flameport.com, along with uh, pictures of many other items. So that is it for this video, and until next time, thanks for watching.